As one of Canada's big three telecommunication giants, is TELUS a perfect blue chip stock for your portfolio? Holy banana bread, let's do this! Rogers, Bell, and TELUS make up the big three in Canada's telecommunication companies, and many believe this has resulted in a stifling of competition. In fact, this has led to some of the highest cell phone rates in the world. However, if they are raking in all of those profits from those very high cell bills, surely that is a good thing for an investor. It never hurts to make some money back to put towards your really big phone bill. Before we change phone plans, tell me in the comments if you have any shares of Canada's Big Three. Thank you for dropping in on the home of free financial content on YouTube. While you are here, please like and subscribe as you don't want to miss a single moment and a huge thank you for that click. TELUS was founded in 1990 through the merger of two companies, Alberta Government Telephones and EdTel Company, which were both created in the early 1900s. Since then, TELUS has grown to become one of the largest telecommunication companies in Canada, providing a wide range of services including wireless, internet, and television to customers right across the country. Originally, TELUS was based out of Edmonton, but they moved to Vancouver when they merged with BC Tel. In fact, the tale of the big three is the story of big fish getting bigger as they eat up all the little fish. In fact, that's also a story of why our phone bills are so big. TELUS has been a force in Canada with many sponsorships from hockey and technology to the Vancouver Santa Claus Parade. In 2008, they were voted as one of British Columbia's top employers. Before then, though, they did have a few union problems in 2005, and those, those problems did get a little bit messy. However, since then, that seems to all be behind them. TELUS has grown into one of Canada's investors' top blue-chip destinations when it comes to adding a little stability to your portfolio. However, do they really deserve that distinction? Are they all that and a bag of blue chips too? To answer those questions, we need to dial in the math. When we start with a little surface data, TELUS has a market cap of $39.90 billion, which makes them a large cap company. Their market cap before the bear market was $40.53 billion. So that does actually bode well for them as they didn't really lose that much market cap. Their beta comes in at 0.59, which makes them a whole lot less volatile than the market average. Their earnings per share comes in at 1.46, and their diluted EPS comes in at the same for the last year. That does not say there is no dilution at all, though, because there was some dilution as their overall outstanding shares amount has increased by 2.86%, comparing, well, September 22nd to September 21st. Their earnings are forecast to grow by 10.17% per year, which is fantastic. This is a good indicator that they may be a solid investment. Of course, we are not done with the math yet. They have a price to earnings ratio of 19.90, which is great as the average PE ratio amongst telecommunication companies is 20.30. Their price to book ratio comes in at 2.40, which is good as it means they are valued 2.4 times their book value. This is not unusual for a company like TELUS. When we look at their fair value via a discounted cash flow model, it comes in at $65.70. They are currently priced at $27.99, so they are undervalued by a pretty big 57.4%. This is, this is actually not that unexpected, as their share price does seem low compared to their competitors. And our initial fundamentals are not really that bad at all. Of course, we gotta go deeper. TELUS has a dividend and their yield is 5.018%, which is paid out quarterly in the amount of 35.1 cents per share. Their payout ratio comes in at 91.23%. TELUS is a dividend aristocrat with a 17 year streak of raising their dividends. This is certainly assuring. The downside is that their dividend is not well covered by their earnings. The free cash flows are not there for this dividend. Their levered cash flow, what is left after paying expenses, is in the negative at negative $790.12 million. This does not mean you should panic, as TELUS is just using other ways to pay that dividend, and I suspect they plan to keep their dividend aristocrat status. At the start of 2021, TELUS was listed at $24.14, and by the end of the year was $29.94 for a return of investment of 24.03%. Factoring in their dividend, we're looking at a total return in 2021 of 2904 4%. That that's not too shabby. With the arrival of the bear market in 2022, Telus's stock fell from 29.94 
a wee bit down to $27.97 for an ROI of negative 6.58%. If we add those dividends in, you are still down by 1.56%, which is actually not bad compared to the overall market. The TSX in the same time frame is down 5.67%, while the S&P 500 is down by, well, 17.45%. Holy banana bread. I mentioned they were paying their dividends another way, and yes, I was alluding to debt. Let's check out their debt. TELUS has a total debt of $23.18 billion. They also have $17.81 billion in equity. This means that their debt to equity ratio comes in at 130.1%, which I do not like. But this is not that bad for this sort of company. Still on the high side, still a concern, but it's not as bad as it looks, period. In the short term, they have 6.50 billion in assets compared to 9.88 billion in liabilities. When we switch to long term, their long term assets are 47.76 billion compared to 26.56 billion in liabilities. Their short term situation is definitely not ideal. The long term, they have some improvement, which is, well, it is good to see. There are some positives in their debt situation. Their debt to equity ratio has improved over the last five years, so they are moving in the right direction. Also, they are able to service the interest on their debt with their earnings before interest and taxes, or EBIT. Their debt situation is not ideal, but it is not out of control either. They have demonstrated that they are good at managing debt, and with their EBIT rising, that can be good provided they use some of those extra earnings to start paying that debt down a wee bit. So what is the final verdict? Talus is a blue chip company and there is no danger that they will collapse in on their debt. They are a solid company with a lot of potential. If they maintain and continue to grow their earnings, they will have the revenue to get that debt under control. As an investor, they are a solid stable choice for moderate level dividends and there is potential for some good growth once the market moves back to bullish places. The dilution I mentioned earlier is fairly consistent with TELUS, so not really as big of a factor as it might seem at first. Their performance compared to the market is absolutely one good reason to be interested in this stock. I think when you are thinking of growth, TELUS is good for long-term plans and maybe not as great for short-term growth. They are absolutely a solid choice to get exposure to that telecommunication sector. TELUS does offer a lot of potential, but unfortunately, none of that potential is going to lower your phone bill. The fun does not have to end here. Check out my video on Canada's big sex banks that I will link on the left. Otherwise, check out the video on the right that YouTube thinks you will like. Your click will decide who is right, and I will see you in the next video.